question about Josh Gordon a lot of people have had is if the guy was banned from the game last year and he comes back, isn't that time served? Where did the four-game suspension come from? Um, you know, I wonder the same thing. And my best guess, based on knowing what I know, is, you know, there was a, a test that was red flagged in March. Remember, this was supposed to happen um, sort of before – I forget the actual time, but I think it was supposed to happen before free agency, or certainly before the draft. And then word came down that he had failed a test or had a test red flagged, and everybody hit pause for a couple months, and then he you know, was set to reapply. So my best guess is that this suspension is somehow related to that test. Now, I know Joey Bosa is a throwback guy, but – I, I I never thought we would be thrown back to the I time. This is going. Yeah, I never thought that we'd be thrown back to the time where uh, where we have a holdout by a rookie at the beginning of training camp. I mean, the Chargers report rookies report Friday, Ian. It's Tuesday, and nothing. What's happening here on this front? Yeah, nothing. I mean, they, you know, they they've tried to work it out, um, but there are there are some issues, you know, and it's for the Chargers. It's based on their precedent and the deals they've struck on their last several first round picks. And for, you know, Joey Bosa's agents at CAA, it is about, you know, not, not money because that's really – you don't really negotiate money for these rookie deals anymore. It's now about um, offset language a little bit, but really mostly payout structure. In other words, you know, he's going to get a fully guaranteed signing bonus. It's going to be a lot. Um, but when does he actually get it? How – you know, when is it deferred to? And I think there's structures that the guys at CAA are fighting for, uh, and they – you know, they've done it for other players, and this is what they deem necessary now. And, um, you know, to see Bosa, um, you know, sit out minicamp was a little startling. I was not expecting it. I think a lot of people weren't. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's definitely something to watch. Um, you know, it's definitely something to watch as we get toward Friday. How does it play out? I mean, is there really going to be a, a, an offset language holdout in the National Football League? Is that really going to happen? <sighs> I, I would have a hard time seeing an offset line which hold out. I would, but you know, if the payout structure isn't right, uh, if you know you're going to stand on principle, um, I, I could see a situation where he doesn't oh, report on day geez. one. You know, I don't know how long it's going to linger because what is it really worth to you, um, especially like for the team if you're going to pay the guy anyway, or a player if you want to get on the field. Um, but I don't know. It's it's. <laughs> I can't. I can't rule it out. Like I probably would have thought I would be able to. So, who's? Uh, let's let's do this real quick. Who who's the first week starter for the Jets? Jets versus Browns, Week One. Jets start who? I still still think it's going to be Ryan Fitzpatrick. I really do. Even though tomorrow is reporting day, and there's no word yet, and everyone's getting ready for Geno, and this could linger linger into camp. Um, I think the real interesting thing here is. Let's say let's just play this out a little bit. Let's say that you know if Fitz doesn't report tomorrow, then obviously that sort of takes one of the deadlines away, and then it might be a little while. Well, I mean, look, so, it's it's going to come down to I think, and I know you've reported something similar that that Fitzpatrick is going to let Geno play game one of the preseason and roll the dice and just say, uh, okay, um, you know, he's either going to undercut his ability to even sign what he has if Geno Smith plays right. well. But if Geno Smith doesn't, even if it's just a couple of series, then he's got a little bit more of a hammer back, Ian. Agree. I agree with, that, with all of that. The question for me that I keep kicking around in my head is, what if Geno plays well? Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the risk. Yeah. You know, that's and, the risk. That's just, you know, this is a really interesting high-stakes gamble because there, you know, there's not a lot of seats at the table. And I guess you know what Fitzpatrick could do is you could retire, theoretically, Um or he could wait around and, you know, wait for a quarterback injury that, you know, happens in week two or three or four or whatever it is. It's crazy. And maybe, you know, he's played with a million teams. He probably knows all the systems by now. And then week so, week, week one starts off on Thursday night before I let you go, Ian. Uh, who's the quarterback for the Denver Broncos that night? What do you think? Uh, I would imagine it's Mark Sanchez. Won't be Paxton you know, Lynch? I mean, you don't think Lynch has any shot to do this here? I don't, I don't, um, and you know, Trevor Simeon, I, I hear what they're saying, but I think it's, you know, they want Mark Sanchez to win it. I think he's going to, and actually like, you know, he's sort of gotten ridiculed. He's really not bad. Um, I think he's, he'll be a distributor perfect for what that offense needs. Um, I think he's going to be fine. The Rich Eisen show weekdays at noon Eastern on audience.